don't, we do need another beaker later. Can you come and collect that when you start your second experiment? Good one, Gemma. Thanks for reminding me about that. But there's one more thing. We need to measure the water. We don't want to use the beaker. We want to be more accurate than that. Aiden, do you know what we need? The measuring cylinder. Excellent. Measuring cylinder. And that completes everything that we need. Okay, there it all is. Along with our notebook and pen. So you've already ruled up the table, Gemma. You've got to bring that along. Yeah, everyone needs a, their notebook and pen with their table already ruled up. In it. All right, how am I actually going to set this up, though? I need to measure the 100 mils of water. Someone want to help me out? It's not complete yet. What do I need to do? A few more things. Sagar? Um, you get the, um, the water, it's actually the other way around. Good try. So I get the measuring cylinder, because this is the more accurate device, fill that with 100 mils of water, and then put it in the beaker. Because obviously we can't heat in something that's plastic, we need to heat on something that's glass. So this is going to be doing the heating, and this is going to be doing the measuring. Okay? You need to have it at eye level when you're measuring out using a measuring cylinder, and I'll tell you why. This is our measuring cylinder. Here's the measurements on it. Water uh, has surface tension, which means it's sort of when you have a drop of water on a bench, it makes a dome, doesn't it? It doesn't go flat, it actually makes a little dome. It sticks to things. That's because it's clinging to the bench. If you put a drop of water on your hand and then hold it upside down, it doesn't drop off, it sticks to your hand. So water's a little bit sticky. And when we have water in a measuring cylinder, it actually looks like that because it sticks to the sides of the measuring cylinder. This is called a meniscus. And you'll be learning about that a lot more. Yes, Jake? Um, do we actually heat the we do, of course yeah, we do. But do you have to sway it? No, not in this instance. Because we have the gauze mat, that's a good question. Because we have the gauze mat, the, the bottom of the beaker is protected from the hottest part of the flame. And that heat is distributed because of that plaster that's on the gauze mat. Okay? So if we're putting bare glass onto the Bunsen burner flame, yes, we would need to sway. But because we've got the gauze mat, no. Good question. Back to the meniscus, where I want you to read the level of the water when we have a meniscus present is at the bottom of the meniscus, not at the sides, where it's sort of licking up at the sides. Don't read it there, read it at the bottom. So you'd want to see the measurement for 100 millilitres there at the bottom. Okay, pretty straightforward. So I'm going to fill that up now. We need to have it at eye level. So you can get these taps to go. I'll show you drop by drop. They're really good. Drop, drop. They're scientific tap, so you can get this as accurate as you need to. So I'm just going to put that under, and I'm going to I'm going to pop down here so I can have it at eye level. So I'm just filling it up, getting it close, and then going drop by drop, 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 drop. this situation here to start the experiment. Get the lighter ready. Mm, yeah, but there's something oh, else. That thing up. Okay, I could put the water in. How am I going to measure it? The measure the temperature, that is. Letitia, how am I going to measure the temperature? <laughs> Stick the thermometer in. I could put it like that, but I've got something that could actually hold the thermometer that would make a better apparatus, a better setup. All right, Richard. In the clamp. In the clamp. Okay, excellent. I want to hold it by this top part, the black part. I don't want to put the clamp around there because I can't see the readings on the thermometer because we're going to go all the way up to 100. So I want to hold it at the top there. So I'm going to open up this clamp and then close it back up around the top part. And then I'm just going to readjust all of this. I'm going to move that out because that's not in the middle of my beaker. I want everything to be centred. So I'm going to loosen up this bit that's holding the clamp in. Move it out a bit. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm going to lower it down. And I don't want it to touch the bottom. So I want to be recording the temperature of the water, not that glass that's on the bottom. So I'm going to lower it down. Tighten that up again. And that's right in the middle. One other thing, you don't want your Bunsen burner off to the side like that. Okay, can someone tell me why it's a problem if for the safety flame it's off to the side like that, but then when you do the hot flame it's like that? It's not accurate. It's not accurate. Anything else? It's not a... Yep, starts with F. Fair. Fair. fair test. test. We got there in the end. It's not a fair test. Of course the blue flame's going to heat up even quicker if it's directly underneath, but on the safety flame it's off to the side. That's not a fair test. We can't compare those tests because we haven't put it under the same conditions. So they both have to be right in the middle. Okay? Or wherever you have it, it's got to be the same for the two tests. Anyway, in the middle is the best place for it. We're almost done. If I could get that measuring cylinder back, I should know. Thank you very much. And then we're pouring very carefully into the beaker. Now, what would you do at this stage if you spilt some and it went off the side? Tip it all and do it again. You sure would. You tip every drop out and you start again. And you'll find in science that that's often what you have to do. You might get halfway into an experiment and realise, oh, I forgot that step. You start it all again because we need to have it fair test. Okay, even if you spilled three or four drops, that's too much. You've got to start again. Everything has to be 100% accurate. So there we have it. The water's in. Uh, the thermometer's ready to go. I've got all my apparatus here. Done that. But we're going to be working in partners, so I need a partner. Nash, if you wouldn't mind coming up. Before you start the experiment, make sure you know how to work the stopwatch. It seems pretty straightforward. This one on the right. Right, yes. Start. Stop. So the right one starts it and stops it. The one on the left, reset. Start. Stop. Reset. Make sure you can do that. I'm sure that you'll need to do probably start and stop a couple of times before you actually get the flame right. Okay, so Nash, you're on the stopwatch. Can you start, stop and reset? Just show me that you can do that. Stop. Reset. Excellent. So Nash knows how to work it. Alright. Tell me, am I ready to go or is there one more thing that I need to do? Jake? Okay, I could do that, but I actually want to do something else. Yeah, it's a really important step. Castle. Nash? Get the piece of paper, like the, the grass thing that we wrote down. Yes, the table, yeah. and do what with it? I've write got it. it down every 30 seconds, like the temperature. Hmm. Alright, that's close enough. What I want to do is record the initial temperature before we even start the Bunsen burner. Okay, and that's at time zero. Okay, so we haven't even started the stopwatch. Time zero, we want to know what the room temperature of that water is. What is the starting temperature before any heat's been applied? I need to record that now. Again, make sure it's at eye level. I'm reading that as 22 degrees. Okay, if you... The thermometer goes up in units of one. So every line is one. And then I think it has a big line. One, two, three, four. A big line at five. One. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then it'll have another reading there. So every line is one. So what I was reading just then at 22, the red bit in the middle looked like that. Oh, it was just, yeah. yeah, that's the red line in the middle, 22. And if it was at 25, it would be there. 26 there. 27 there, and if it was 30, it would be there. Does that make sense how we read that thermometer? Yeah. So make sure we can do that before you start. So I'm reading it at 22. So I'm going to put this into my yellow. I'm going to do the safety flame first. So I'm putting 22 here. That's my starting temperature. You need to do that before you move on to the blue flame as well, when you set it up next time for the blue flame. So, in order to be accurate, we want to synchronise this, Nash. So as soon as I light the flame, you want to hit go on the stopwatch. Okay. So as soon as you see that go up, bang, we're hitting start and then we can be accurate. Okay, so following the steps of lighting a Bunsen burner safely, I've got the flame, making sure my collar is closed, I'm holding over the Bunsen burner and then starting the flame. Okay. Maybe one second delay there, but that's okay. Now, Nash, when it gets to 30 seconds, can you say now and then I'm going to take a recording.
Okay? This is exactly what you need to do. Everything I'm doing here is what you and your partner need to do. So I'm getting ready at eye level. Going up, up, up and up. Yeah. Thank you. 24. But don't hit stop on the stopwatch. A lot of people go, bing, stop. No. We need to click, click the clock, ticking, tick, 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 all the way through till... Is that 24 degrees? All the way through till it's boiling. How do we know when to stop? How do we know when it's boiling? What is the point where we actually hit stop on that watch? Luke? If it's bubbling. Bubbling. More detail. We actually said bubbling... Oil. Becky? No. That's actually what we're trying to test. Tell me when now. it's one minute. One minute, very good. All right, got to keep on the ball. 28. That's why we're testing how hot is hot. When it's bubbling, will it actually be at 100 degrees? Will it be at 99? Will it be 101? That's the interesting thing that we're going to find out. We predict that it might be 100, but we're actually going to stop it at some other point. Haley? When it's bubbling vigorously. Vigorously was the term. Bubbling vigorously. So when there's a lot of bubbles, imagine like in a kettle at home, or you're going to put some pasta on, you've got the water yeah. bubbling vigorously. Thank you. Whoop, don't lose track. 34. Get the idea? Every 30 seconds until bubbling vigorously. Usually for the safety play, that's around the 10 minute mark. Could be as high as 12, could be as low as 9 or 8, depending on your gas supply and your Bunsen burner. What I want you to do is though, it's unlikely that it's going to stop exactly on 10 minutes, or 10 minutes 30. It might be somewhere between that. I want you to write down that exact time that you're yeah. stopping. Thank you, Nash. So if you stop it at 10 minutes and 15, you write that down. The exact time, please. Okay, that'll become important later on. Once it's bubbling vigorously, we turn everything off, hit stop on the stopwatch, write down that time, and then raise up your thermometer. In fact, I'll do that now to show you. Let's say my test is finished. Can I check this off? Yeah, you can turn that off now. Thanks, Nash. Um, undo the clan while you're supporting it because you don't want to crash into the beaker. Raise it up. Put up your hand and I'll come and collect it. And then you can go and get a new fresh beaker, a cool beaker. You don't want to start with all of this stuff already hot because it will affect the next experiment. It will already be preheated. Okay, go and get a new beaker and start again on the other flame. Now, as you're setting up, I'm going to come around and tell you whether you're starting on the safety flame or the blue flame first. I don't want everyone to start on the same one. So half of us will start on the safety flame, half on the blue flame. All right, so, yes, Jay. Do we do like to feel your partner? Do you only do it once or do you do it twice? A great idea is if you're the first person to read the temperatures and your buddy is doing the stopwatches, then you switch for the next experiment. So you go to the stopwatch and your buddy does the reading. So everyone gets a turn of everything. All right? So hopefully we've got an even number here today, so there's enough for pairs and no one's hanging on by themselves. Uh, when I say go in a minute, you'll hop up, you'll help yourself to a lab coat of the appropriate size, you'll help yourself to some safety glasses. Hang on, I have not said go. You just stay there, both of you. Thank you, Nash. You just hang on, please. What you need to do is get your coats and glasses on. Once you've done that, collect the necessary apparatus from the front and take them back to your bench spot. Then begin setting up the experiment like this. Once you're set up, put up your hand and I'll come around and give you a lighter actually because there's not enough for everybody. I'll see that you've got it set up properly and then I'll give it to you and say go for it. So just double check with me that you've got it all set up properly. Can someone remind me what are the pieces of equipment we need to get from the front? There's four of them. Haley one. Thermometer. Thermometer. Sagar. Stopwatch. Stopwatch. The beaker. The beaker. Well, I'll give you the lighter, and there's one other one. Okay, some safety glasses. We're not talking about the trolley, Richard. The measuring cylinder. Okay, you need to take those back. Okay, please begin the experiment. Thanks, Tyler.